Welcome to this broadcast of Liberty Christian Center. Let's join Pastor Kelly as he teaches us our position in the kingdom of God. Welcome. My name is Pastor Kelly, Liberty Christian Center. Uh, this is I, very seldom do I get like a fresh time to just start something new. I usually piggyback off the latest sermon I did, but with Easter being done, um, I heard something yesterday, and it got me thinking. And it, you know, I understood what they were saying. Somebody was talking about the miracles that God's doing in their life, and I get that, right? But the more I thought about it, <clears throat> I started looking at it tonight, so I looked up miracle. Definition of miracle is an event that appears to be contrary to the laws of nature and is regarded as an act of God. Amen. Now I can you know I, I can see that. There was a lot of there was a lot of miracles in the old testament, right? Uh, deliverance from Egypt. God had a hand in that. Uh, parting of the Red Sea. Uh, Jonah, Daniel. You know, there was a lot of things going on. Manna from heaven. We can go and look back where God specifically intervened and told, or told them, do this and here's what I'll do. And then there were, there were actually other times that, you know, the three Hebrew children. I, I, my text doesn't tell me that God specifically told them. They just had a covenant with their God and weren't going to bow down. And through that faith, God showed up. So I started kind of trying to run it through the New Testament. And the more I thought about it, the miracle God did for us in the New Testament, I count the resurrection as a, as a miracle. That was, that was God. But salvation... Right? Salvation is an event that appears to be contrary to nature, to the laws of nature, and is regarded as an act of God. God said, if you believe in my son, I will not impute sin to you anymore. I will impute righteousness. Yes. That um, born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. So that was a, salvation is a, is a miracle that God was was part of and 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 we couldn't have got without him. Amen? Real quick look over in Galatians 3. <clears throat> we're gonna wait we've looked at these scriptures I don't know how many times but I just want to show we're gonna look at them again. <clears throat> Galatians 3 verse 29 says if you be Christ, that's a question you need to get straight and you need to be fully persuaded of in your own mind, whether you are or are not. If you are not, please get in touch with us. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. amen. I miss my ameners. <laughs> Look at chapter 4. He says in verse 5, Jesus came, made a woman made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. That's Daddy, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen? Amen? So what I'm trying to get at, and I'm not trying to split hairs here, but, you know, if the enemy has us just a little bit wrong, if I'm trying to walk 10 feet a little bit wrong, ain't a big deal. If I'm trying to walk 100 miles a little bit wrong, it's a, a problem. Amen? Amen? So I understand God does miracles. But he says here that, you know, he's, he's adopted us. He's made us heirs. So as many as believe, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You receiving the blessings in your life right now, it's not a miracle. It's your God-given right. Yes. 
as his covenant child. Now we're going to look at something. Because we looked at right before, the, the definition of right. You know, it, it, okay, what's the difference? God can do a miracle or I understand who I am in Christ. If God does a miracle for somebody else, but not for you, the enemy's going to, he going he gonna to give you a hard time over that. He's going he's gonna to work on you. Well, you didn't go to the right church. You don't, you don't read as much as them. You don't pray as much. He's going to use it. God says that as his children, we have a God-given right to this promise. The word right means a justified claim or entitlement or the freedom to do something. Yes. That's it. That's good. I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not healed because God did a miracle. I'm healed because God's covenant with his children says Jesus took stripes on his back and I deserve it. I have a claim to it. Right. I have a legal claim to healing. That's right. I have a legal claim to prosperity. I have a legal claim to protection from whatever's going on in this world. Yeah. I have a legal just. He says justified. That's legal terms. God tells me that I'm sanctified, I'm righteous, I'm holy, and I'm justified. That's right. I have a legal claim to this covenant as His child. So what it what it really is, and I mean, it's going to sound like I'm splitting hairs, but the word miraculous. The word, the, the word miraculous means apparently contrary to the laws of nature and caused by supernatural power. Now they're close, right? But a miracle is God's got a hand in it. Miraculous, the power has. You with me? God don't have to get involved. He, he can do, he can, he can, he has set everything in motion and he sat down. Why? Because as his child, look over in Luke 10. As his child and a covenant partner, a covenant heir, an heir to the covenant, I have certain justified rights. Amen. One of them in Luke 10. Verse 18 says, Behold, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I give unto you power. This first power is actually the word authority. I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That second power is, you look it up, it's dunamis and it means miraculous power. Amen. He has given us as his children a miraculous power. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to get involved because he's given us the power to do it. Yes. Yes. As a covenant child, I can claim a legal claim to healing. Yes. I have a legal claim to everything that accompanies salvation. Everything, the inheritance. Being an heir means you have an inheritance. He put me here for a purpose. He put my provision here before I got here. That's right. My provision was here before I ever thought about being here. Yeah. And spending 29 years fumbling around in this world trying to do it their way before I came to an understanding and a relationship with him and he revealed to me why I'm here. Now that I know that, I'm going to accomplish that. And a little bit wrong is going to be a problem as far as I'm going. Yeah. I've given you not only the authority, but the miraculous power, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Go to Ephesians. Yeah. Ephesians 3. Verse 19 says, We'll go to 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love, that is your foundation, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length, depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, if you can just understand and be convinced and fully persuaded in your own mind that Christ loves you and that will never change, you're going to find some peace. You're going to find some joy. You're going to find some comfort. 
to know the love of Christ because knowing that it passes knowledge. And you can you might be filled with all the food. He says, Mike, so I can be. There is a way to be filled with the fullness of Christ. Right. Or the fullness of God. Verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. If he did it, if we stopped right there and he did it, we would call that a miracle. But it goes on. He's going to do abundant, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. We have a part to play in this. I can't just sit back and wait for God to do a miracle in my life when He's put the power in me to create the miracle. Right. To create whatever it is I need to fulfill my purpose. It's already here. That's right. It's just somebody else is trying to tell me that they have a part of it. You know, it uh, <laughs> I'm really trying not to get too... Uh, in depth into what's going on in the world right now because the power in us is a supernatural power That's right. the power in us supersedes what's going on in this world mm -hmm. but you look around in this world and we have billionaires throwing us nickels and telling us we should be happy mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's kind of what the enemy does ain't it God's, God has put enough provision for me in, in, in this world. My provision should be taking care of my kids and my grandkids and my great-grandkids. That's right. Just my provision. Mm -hmm. Not theirs. In the end, he's, he lets loose a few crumbs here and there and says, God did a miracle. <laughs> no, I didn't. He did a miracle of salvation. Yeah, that's right. And then that, 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 that miracle that he did was put his miracle, miraculous working power in me. Yes. That I can speak forth that power mm -hmm. at any time. The, according to the exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Mm -hmm. He don't have to get up off the throne, come down here and do it. He just needs us to understand we have the power and the legal justified claim to do it. Mm -hmm. Acts 10 38. You don't got to turn it, you should have it memorized. Many times I'll say it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost and power. Yes. Jesus Christ was our example. Mm -hmm. It can say how God anointed Kelly from Trinity with the Holy Ghost and power. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's blasphemous. No, it ain't. This book was written to me. Yeah. Yes. We just read Jesus said, I've given you the authority and the power. Yes. Yes. That's right. God has anointed us with the Holy Ghost and power. And that supernatural power overcomes and supersedes any oppression of the devil, heal people, do good, and heal all that are oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God's with you. That's right. That power that we're working in is it's, it's God. Yeah. You know, I was looking at this. A lot of times in the Old Testament, miracle and miraculous are not used a whole lot in the Bible. And very seldom in the, in the Old Testament. And it's always together with miracles, signs, and wonders. Basically, when God would do a miracle in the Old Testament, it was an omen or a sign or a token that he was involved in the situation. It's, it's really no different. If God is with me, and I know he's anointed me with the Holy Spirit and power, and I speak that power into situations, signs and wonders, and a, and a, and a, and a, there should be some token of example that God is in this situation. That's right. Right? We don't just say things and, oh, it didn't work. No. I spoke the anointed word of God, and this situation has to come correct and line up with truth. That's right. It has to line up with what God said. Right. I don't care. Who said it? Amen. You can call yourself a, a spiritual enemy, a government entity, my next door neighbor, my family members. It makes no difference. If it goes contrary to this, this is going to supersede it. Yeah. This, the power of this word is supreme. Flip over to Hebrews 6 real quick. Let's get back on the other end of it. I'll show you. Now, I know I'm kind of excited tonight. I don't know if it's because... 
I remember another document that tells me that I've been endued with certain unalienable rights. That's right. And I got people poking me with it right now. Mm -hmm. I, I know that document too, and I haven't forgotten it. But this is what that was based on. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to go back to my unalienable God given rights, I'm going back to the beginning. Yeah, that's right. Try not to get. <laughs> Hebrews 6 where are we at Hebrews 6 verse 17 hmm, go to 14 go to 13 we might just go back to verse 1 verse 13 for when God made promise to Abraham what did we read before we are Abraham's seed yeah, that's right. in Christ for when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. This covenant is not based on you. It's based on God saying, I split it and I'm going to back it up. That's right. You ever see, you know, my word is my bond. Okay. I'll, I'll, give, you the first, I'll give you the first go round. But once you burn me, your word ain't nothing. Yeah. God has never not backed up his word. That's right. That's right. He is faithful. Yeah. Because he can swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you. Multiply, and I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Yeah. For men rarely swear by the greater, and an oath for the confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Men swear by a greater. It's kind of like when you go to court, put your hand on the Bible. Right? Because human, human beings know human beings lie, let you down, try the best they can, try as they may to not let you down. Something will come up and human beings will let you down. That's right. So when we have something that of great importance, when we have to swear an oath to something that means something, it's this. So wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs. Who's the heirs? Us. You. The children of God. Mm -hmm. To show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, that means impossible to change, or not able to change, it was impossible for God to lie. Mm -hmm. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into the veil. Mm -hmm. God said it. That's all we that's all I need to know. That's right. Through faith and patience. After he patiently endured, he attained. Obtained. I don't care what the enemy tells me, I don't care what the situations and circumstances tell me, I don't care what the world tells me. I, I base my life on this word. That's right. Because this is what I have legal claim to. Every promise, he says, all the promises of God are yes and amen yes. to his children. In blessing, I'm a blessing, multiplying. They were in hard bondage in Egypt. You know why the enemy started coming down on them so hard? Because they became greater than their enemy. Even in bondage, even as slaves, they became greater than the enemy that the enemy feared them and put them under hard bondage because they were scared. That's right. yeah. Even through the worst circumstances, the children of Israel have always been blessed, increased, and multiplied. That's right. Through wars, famines, mm -hmm. it, 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 it didn't matter because God told them, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply you. And there's not a situation or a circumstance in this natural world that the supernatural power of the Word of God will not overcome. Amen. Flip a few pages over to James, chapter 2. Man, I'm excited. Amen. James, chapter 2, verse 5, he says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? Mm -hmm. 
I don't know how much clearer I can make it. You need to know you're a covenant child. In that, you need to know you're saved. Because in that, you have access to the covenant. Well, what's the covenant say? In blessing, I'll bless you. And in multiplying, I'll multiply you. Deuteronomy 12, what is it, 28? Blessing after blessing. The New Testament. Every promise in this book. The inheritance, the part that God has set aside for you to fulfill your calling that He has you here for, somebody else is toying with and trying to convince you that that when we get, you know, uh, 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 we find a nickel on the ground. Oh, it's a miracle. No, it's a nickel on the ground. A miracle was salvation. That through simple belief in His Son, something happens, a miracle happens in the spirit realm where all your sin is washed away and God sees holiness, righteousness, he, in His sight, He sees you as holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in His sight. That's Scripture. Amen. If you don't see yourself the same way, you need to get in this book. Because when you start seeing yourself... I've been on both ends of the spectrum. I've been in situations before where I felt like I didn't... The few things I had, I didn't deserve. I've caught people ripping me off in certain situations and deal, and I turned around and let them do it because they didn't have the confidence or the self-esteem to stand up and tell them, you're cheating me. Yeah. You're stealing from me. And I know you're doing it. Yeah. And you just go on because that's what the world does. The, the, the rich people, throw the, they steal from the poor people. And the, the ones that have it, take it from the ones that don't have it. We understand that's the world's way. But God put a supernatural, miraculous power inside of us as His children that says, no, you can't. That's right. That's right. No, you cannot steal from God's children. Amen. And I'm not talking even about natural anymore. I'm talking to the enemy that keeps telling all of us that it's better to be poor. It's holy to be poor. I can't do what God's called me to do without the finances and without the provision to do it. I need buildings. I need vehicles. I need, I need a lot of things. We need, we need stuff. Not for my own gain, but because God has called me to a job. And He didn't call me to... I was thinking about this last night. I've used the example before. When I was doing plumbing, the owner of the company had a shop. A kingdom, if you will. Right? Certain jobs would come up. He would call, hey, I got this job over here. Here's what it is. I need you to go do it. Okay. I have the ability. I have the knowledge. I have the legal right. I had a license. I could do that work. But depending on the job, I may have to go to the shop and get a taller ladder or a different machine or a certain tool. The owner supplied everything I needed. Right. I thought, well, I was thinking about it last night, and he said, well, you had, to get, you had to buy hand tools. And I thought about it, I said, yeah, you're right. The only thing I had to buy for myself was one little box with some tools. And I started thinking about it. It's salvation, mm -hmm. holiness, yeah. righteousness, sanctification, Justification, yeah. knowing this covenant, mm -hmm. being filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah. praying, spending time with God. Those are the tools I need in God's kingdom. I don't have to, I don't have to wait on a miracle from God to do my job. Mm -hmm. I have all the tools. He's given me all the tools that I need inside me. Yeah. And anything else, He's going to supply it. Yeah. Yeah. He already has. And i got to get my thinking straight and get behind that because every time the enemy tries to step up and tell me that I don't measure up, you're right, but I don't have to. Yes. I'm his child. That's right. That's right. And I have a justified legal claim yes. to the kingdom and everything that comes with that. I'm, you know, God does miracles. Don't get me wrong. 
But when He's putting miraculous working power in me, I need to know. I need to know that so that I can step out and speak miraculous, anointed, powerful words of truth into situations and watch them crumble Amen. and line up with God. Yeah. Amen. You know, you look back at the ministry of Jesus. Supernatural. Weather. Uh, crowds. He, he'd be in a crowd of thousands with people trying to lay hand, you know, grab him and catch him up. And it didn't say he freaked it out and dropped on the ground and crawled. No, it just says he just passed through the midst of them. Uh, Y'all go ahead in the boat. I'll be over here shortly. How you going to get there? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Got it covered. Supernatural. Transfig, you know, Mount of Transfiguration. There was things he did. These are things that are not impossible to us. They're not unique to him. They are unique to him because he was the first one to do it. But then he says, why aren't you doing it? You know, the book of Acts, he goes, he, he ascends on up and the angel looks down and everybody just standing there. What y'all doing? Why stand you here gazing up to heaven? Didn't he tell you to go do something? Yeah. And in the book of Acts, they started doing it. Somewhere along the line, and we just sat back down and started looking up. When's God going to come do it? <laughs> he ain't. He already put the power in you. That power is Him. Yeah. Anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all the oppressed of the devil, because God is, God is with Him. God was with Him. God is with you. Yes. Right. Miraculous. We can, we can be the initiators of miraculous yeah. in this world. Yeah. Now, I don't care what's going on. You, know, you look around, you read some of the Old Testament stuff, and there they have worse times than this going on. There's been worse plagues, worse famines, worse everything. And the Word of God has always prevailed. And the children of God has always, have always prevailed. And it's nothing's, nothing's changed. So take heart. Fret not, worry not. Be strong and courageous. This too will pass. And through it all, we're enlarging right now. You look around, what well, we got, you know, three or four people here. No. We're reaching more people now than we have in a while. Yeah. Even through this, the children of God are increasing. Yeah. You know, when we first came here, they said there was 52 churches in this county. Yeah. Today, there's over, in this town, yeah. 52 churches in this city. Yeah. Today, there's probably 5,200 because everybody's in their house as a church. Yeah, that's right. Everybody in their house is laying hands on family members and praying the Word of God. Everybody in the house is, is doing what the church should be doing. So it's not the buildings. It's the people. God just, you know, it's, it's, it's nationwide. It's worldwide. God has pulled the cover back on the church and it's going to flourish. Praise God. God did a miracle. It's called salvation. If you've never, if you've never been a part of it, we were, we did a thing yesterday. God, the jailer in Acts asked Paul, "What must I do to be saved?" Get your pen out. Get ready to take a bunch of notes because there's all these steps. What must I do to be saved? Paul said, "Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved." And your family. You got a little, you got some, you got some room left on your page, don't you? It's not complicated. If you've never done it, you need to, you need to enter into that miracle, obtain the things that belong to salvation, and oper start operating in the miraculous power that God has placed in us. You can change your entire world. If you've never done it, just God knows your heart. Romans says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you, you're saved. Yeah. We have a prayer that we say usually, wherever you're at, if you've never done it, close your eyes and just, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And understand that, that what God says happened 
truly happened. Don't spend years like I did letting the enemy lie to you. God said it. He meant it. And he is faithful. God does miracles. We're fixing to see, we're fixing, you know, the signs and the wonders and the glory there, you know, we could, we could quantify them all and spend some time doing that, but I'm telling you, the glory of God is, is loose in this earth right now. Yes. And the manifestation of the love that's in the glory of God is, is something that's going to, that, that, that is the greater works that Jesus was talking about. The greater works than what he did that we're going to do is spread the love of God worldwide. Yes. He was a walking example of the love of God. He was the express image. And the church is in the, the is, is on the, the front lines here of spreading that love to this entire world. Yes. That's that's exciting. But know this, the, the, the power dwells in you. Get up and use it. Amen? Amen? This broadcast has been made possible with support from faithful partners of Liberty Christian Center and viewers like you. If you would like to become a partner or give a one-time donation, please check the description box for more information. Be sure to follow and subscribe so that you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching.